Hi there, welcome to the pod. I'm your host, Frank Royal. I'm looking forward to sharing with you this idea of a project organizing device, this balancing of the craft, the science, and the art of project management, which we believe is lacking in some projects. So if we say that the craft is what we do, we tend to be pretty good at that. It's what we're going to produce, what we're going to deliver, what's going to be visible at the end of the project or potentially visible. Uh, and then the science of how we do it, which of course has come alive with Agile and, and Waterfall and hybrids and Pimbok and APM and all of that kind of good stuff with Scrum and standups and things like that. But also the art and this growth of behavioral psychology and understanding the empathy and the role of empathy in projects and team development and communication and conflict resolution and negotiation decision making. So combining these three was quite important. We felt there was a need to create a space within which that could be made visible within which you could see it. And of course, you can see here, if you combine the craft and the science, for example, you get better productivity. If you can com combine the science and the art, you get a great story for your project, what the story is, whether it's an epic story or not. And then the craft and the art, of course, creates better designs, better customization. So combining them all enables you to keep balance across multiple projects within your portfolio. And we felt that it was necessary moving into what's called the project economy to have a physical space to do this rather than an Excel sheet or, or some enterprise uh, project management system. But we felt that the room could be built from the ground up to enable you to see your projects, to see the flow of those projects and even the status reporting on those projects. So it started with kind of a book that it goes back a while to A Place of My Own by Michael Pollan, which is, is, which is a wonderful book if you haven't read it, but it was this idea of building from the ground up rather than from outside in. And I thought that combining the what, the how, and the why, at this moment when it seems to be, you know, a perfect time for project management to bring those three together, would enable us to see the product, the process, and the people as separate but connected, and refer them back to the craft, the science, and the art representing three different aspects. And so together, this was kind of an embodiment of what it is to be a good project manager and to see good project management in action. Um, and so the pod became this physical representation, almost like the caves of our hunter-gatherer fathers before they went out, um, forefathers for, uh, before they went out hunting together to take on a big challenge. And so I like the idea that sometimes we see this back in time, this connection with our historical path as hunter-gatherers rather than as farmers. Hunter-gatherers perhaps more project thinking in their way rather than farmers, which is perhaps more operational thinking. So we got some architects involved. We created some designs, some prototypes, uh, the color coding to represent the familiarity of feel of those areas. Um, and they produced some nice ideas um, for us to conceptually see where the furniture would be. And then we built some prototypes of this from Lawson Architects in Pennsylvania. Everything in the room is designed to allow some space to collaborate, to move around, to do these exercises, but a different mindset. We're looking at something together. We're looking at each other. We're looking at something that we're building. And so there was a different area. So each area is purpose designed thoughtfully to either represent an activity or an action in a certain sequence. And for example, you can see in the science area, there's from the vision and the goal into the stakeholders who have the requirements that generates the work that causes us concerns or risks, as we call them, that allows us to then build a proper schedule and a budget in step six. So we see this flow of activities that you'll see on the posters behind me here, and of course, in the next few slides, but you see that in the science. In the art, it's more circular area. You can see around the table, we're looking at each other. We're talking about motivation, conflict resolution, team development, decision-making, even project communications. And so it's more ongoing in that area. The craft, more dedicated space, better lighting in this area, modeling table to be able to build some representation of what it is we are going to produce at the end. So the modeling table are very important, the science area very important, the art area very important. Built a couple of prototypes of this. Various people have been good to give us some spaces within their, their offices here in Princeton. Uh, this is my garage, which we converted. Um, and then because of COVID, of course, we had to bring in some cameras. You can see around me there, the light board, the whiteboard, the flip chart. And so because we couldn't come to you anymore, we had to bring you to us. So you're welcome to come and visit us. We can demonstrate these areas using the cameras. We have 
eight cameras and all, but this is a prototype. This is not obviously the functional part at the moment. It is kind of possible to imagine four or five people in here and then to scale it up, of course, to the larger groups that we've had up to 30 or 40 people at a time using this method, this pod, a project organizing device method. Um, here's some details of the light board in the bottom left hand corner, the whiteboard, an overhead camera capturing up the hand movements in the top right hand corner. The sofa area used for coaching, you know, the fireplace, the library, the, the, the nice lighting, and, and of course, uh, then one of the activities, the stakeholder analysis in the, in the right-hand side. So the stakeholder analysis leading to the requirements analysis, the work breakdown structure, and the risk, and the color-coded post-it notes moving forward. Here's some photographs of some people in action prior to COVID. We used to do this in conference rooms, in factories, in hotel rooms. And um, you see people collaborating, working together. I know it sounds simplistic and strange, but people working around post-it notes has been effectual in creating the mindset of the future, which is what we need to get into for project management. So visualization, simulation, role-playing, all of these things enabling us to be better at managing the future, managing these future events that will come about. Again, here's some more details of the pod, just again showing you on the right-hand side, the schedule representing a long project going on, people discussing it, um, and other people taking activities. So you can see it here. Uh, and again, here are some more pictures of the pod and how each area is physically designed to represent, uh, for example, the dark board in the bottom left-hand side, showing the vision. What are we aiming for? What are we aiming for here? What is our goal? And then carrying forward to the top left-hand side, the chess pieces, representing all the other projects that are happening while I'm looking at this one project. Okay, we've built some models of this. We do talk about tools and techniques and project management is sadly lacking in tools. We have plenty of techniques, but, but lacking in tools, but a fool with a tool is still a fool. So we do have a, a workbench in the pod, actually a, a physical workbench is here, where we represent the tools as, you know, as tools that you might have for project managers. We're, we're developing that as well in, in parallel with the pod itself. And so keep an eye on that. We're trying to develop some better tools for project management. At the moment, it's quite pathetic what we have as project managers, but we want to improve that. We do have a pop-up version which has been on the road to USA, to Sweden, to India, to Australia. It's physically a box, a big uh, suitcase that we roll out with all the activities. But of course, in that case, the posters go up on the wall. The schedule is a long uh, rollout schedule that goes out about 20 feet long. Um, we have the activities, um, we have the modeling materials, um, and that's done in a conference room. It's done in a hotel room, as I said, but, uh, but it's, a, it's a simplistic representation of, of what it is we want to do in the area. So my name is Frank Royal. Sometimes I have a beard, sometimes I don't. Look forward to seeing you sometime in the pod or around the pod or virtually. And um, we combine this with Miro and Mural, as you may know, um, to capture some of the results and um, to actually do some of the collaborative thinking. Um, but I wrote Keeping Score, which is kind of the foundation of what we're doing. It sits somewhere between Agile and Waterfall. It sits in that hybrid space, but we find the activities very useful. We find the idea of seeing them in one space and being able to navigate between the spaces very intuitive. And you don't need a PhD. You don't need four days training to come and use the space. It's a bit like a tennis court. You rent it, you borrow it for the hour, for two hours. And perhaps COVID has given us an opportunity to use or to look at how we use our space and maybe to take some of those areas of open plan offices and maybe to create some conference spaces that might be dedicated to projects rather than dedicated to operations. And I think that would be a useful use of space post COVID. So looking forward to seeing you sometime. My name is Frank Royal. Looking forward to being in touch with you.